Hi, my name is Rosser Douglas. I'm an engineering technician here with Moog Music, and today I'm going to take you through the Verkstadt Analog Synthesizer. It is a one oscillator analog synthesizer that we made for MoogFest 2014 for an educational engineering workshop. The first thing you will see in your box is the printed circuit board for the Verkstadt synthesizer. If you inspect it here, you will see that you have your voltage controlled oscillator, the Moog low pass filter, two different mod sections in the middle. Here is our envelope generator section with attack and decay control. LFO with shape and rate controls, and at the bottom is a full octave tack switch keyboard with a glide grate control. Before you use your Verkstadt synthesizer, you will need to assemble it. And to do that, you will need a number one Phillips head screwdriver and a pair of wire cutters. Today I'm working on an anti-static mat, but if you don't have one that's okay, just be sure that you're working in a static-free environment. And one way to do that is to touch a piece of metal before you handle the printed circuit board. The first step is to attach the rubber feet into the bottom enclosure of the Verkstadt. After that, you will trim about a sixteenth of an inch off of the nylon washer that will go over the audio jack. Install the circuit board into the bottom enclosure. Use the five silver PCB screws to secure it to the chassis. Place a black nylon hex nut onto the audio jack and hand tighten it to the chassis. Now would be a good time to make sure that your Verkstadt powers up. The LFO LED will illuminate to indicate that the power is on. Now place the top enclosure over the circuit board. Use the four black sheet metal screws to tighten down the top enclosure. Now that the Verkstad is assembled, let's talk about the individual modules. Here we have the voltage controlled oscillator. The oscillator is the primary source of sound for the Verkstad. It has a nine octave frequency range. and a control for the width of the pulse wave. The voltage controlled filter is a classic Moog ladder filter. It filters out harmonics of the sound at 24 dB per octave and it's a four pole filter. It's one of the foundations of subtractive synthesis. If the resonance is all the way up, the filter will self-oscillate. Here we have the voltage controlled amplifier. It has two selections, on which will drone continuously, an envelope generator for use of the tacked keyboard. Here we have a one octave tack switch keyboard from C to C with a glide rate control. The tack switch keyboard is low note priority, meaning that when a note is held, only notes below it on the scale will sound. The glide is a control that allows you to determine the amount of time it takes for one note's pitch to transition to the next. Here we have the envelope generator, which has three controls, one for the attack time, which determines the amount of time it takes for the signal to reach its max value. It can be short and punchy, or it can take a longer amount of time. The decay time determines how long it takes for the signal to fully decay. It can be short and muted, or it can have an extended release time. Here we have the low frequency oscillator. It has two controls, one for the rate or frequency, and one selection for the wave shape. The low frequency oscillator is your primary source of modulation, and it goes from subsonic audio well into the audio range. Here we have the VCO modulation section with three controls, one source selection switch for LFO, and for the envelope generator. It has an amount control which allows you to control the depth of the modulation. And it has a selectable destination switch which allows you to control frequency which we've heard, and the width of the pulse wave. 
Here we have the VCF modulation section as selectable source switch for LFO. And the EG, which takes the shape of the envelope generator and applies it to the cutoff frequency. Here we have a patchable header that allows you to experiment with control voltages. For example, we're going to do a frequency modulation patch where I take the output of the VCO and feed it to the input of the VCF using the included patch cable. Using all the individual modules we've talked about within the Verkstad, you can sculpt a virtually infinite amount of sound. The Verkstadt analog synthesizer was designed with test points, which are plated through whole pads that are in each section of the Verkstadt synthesizer, including some of the most important signals, including power rails, VCO core output, etc. There's also a number of jumpers, both open and closed. The open ones are often used in unused pins of an IC, but a lot of these closed ones are vital for the performance of the Verkstadt. For example, they basically are doing the job of a trace, taking one signal from one point to another. These are easily removable, essentially making a cut trace, allowing you to send that output to an external signal processor and then back in so that you can, say, ring modulate your signal before you send it into a filter. There's also this 16 by 6 experimenters pad that is all plated through hole pads that are not connected to one another or to anything else on the circuit board. It greatly expands the space that you have to install external components, build a simple circuit if you have it. The only limitation is your imagination. On behalf of everyone here at Moog Music, we look forward to seeing how you customize and use your Verkstadt analog synthesizer. Yeah.